a lot of people have to understand that humanity is at stake because 800 million jobs could be affected by the year 2030. And what, it doesn't matter which industry you're in, you're going to be affected. You're a lawyer, um, you know, media, anything can be affected by artificial intelligence for the better or for worse. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Bianca B. And welcome to the Bianca B Show, where we talk about business, finances, and friendships. So I'm super excited about our guest today. He is a dear friend of mine, an entrepreneur, CEO, and founder of AFIT. I'm super excited about this because it's all about technology. AI is such a huge topic right now. And what better guest to have than Forbes, Brandon Cooper. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Good, good. So you hit Forbes. That's amazing. Congratulations. Super Thank proud. You. Appreciate it. Yes, yeah, honor. I've been working at it for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Now, when we first started um, talking and did our first interview, you know, you were just starting from the ground up. You are self-made. You built this. And what's so cool is that AI is such a huge topic. So for those of those out there who are listening and don't really know about your company, kind of tell viewers and listeners about AFIT. Yeah, AFIT was really created from seeing friends and family around me who really just didn't have enough time for themselves. Uh, we can all attest to that at some capacity, whether you have three three kids, four kids, or you're just juggling two or three jobs. It's, the saying goes, it's never enough time in a day. Uh, so for me, I was working at Apple for seven years as a senior technology advisor uh, pr prior to founding AFIT. And uh, I've always said, uh, you know, sitting there, we're working me like a dog. And I say, man, I just wanted to create a way for me to get things done with, without actually having to do them myself. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just an idea at that time. This was around like maybe like 2019-ish or so. This is before like the AI wave hit right now. Um, but I did talk to a few other co-founders about it. And uh, what we've invented is an automation network that allows the everyday person to leverage digital artificial intelligence bots to do tasks on their behalf. Uh, one thing I learned when I was 19 was uh, you'll never outwork 100 people. So I said, how can I have 20 versions of Brandon doing 20 different things at a time? And that's what AFID is in essence. And so this is really targeted towards to all businesses, but you really specifically talk about like small businesses and things like that, because as an entrepreneur, when you first started out, it sometimes is just you and you don't have multiple people. So with this AFIT and this AI, um, what is it? Is it like a subscription base? Like how is the program ran and how can people, uh, you know, subscribe and get this? Yeah, great question. Uh, yes, it's subscription based. So what we we just soft launched on iOS, which is iPhone and iPad, and then we have Android coming out in about a week from now. Um, so we're preparing to roll that out too. Even though I'm I'm, I'm more team Apple than in Android. No shade to Droid. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, subscription based. So basically, uh, depending on how many bots you want to operate at a time, that's a subscription plan that you would choose. So if you go into the application right now, you won't see the subscription plans yet. Everything is going to be freemium for a while because mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're introducing a new proof of concept to people to understand how this is going to work because everyone is very used to trading time for money. Like, oh, well, you have to work hard. You right. have to put in your 40 hours or whatever it is a week. And then in two weeks you get paid. But with AFIT, our methods is it's a turnkey solution. So you don't have to have any tech experience. You're basically licensing pre-existing automation bots from our marketplace. So AFID as the company, we create different use cases for those bots, uh, which will include data entry, customer support, and some other things. And then we let third-party developers, meaning people outside of AFID, they can also list their artificial intelligence tools in our marketplace, in our network. So that's the beauty of it. So not only is it for small businesses, but it's also for the everyday person who just wants to leverage some time and make some side hustle money. So what have you learned about being a business owner that you wish you would have known in the beginning? Because, I mean, you've only you just started in 2019. But what are some things that you're like secure on now and truly understand after being a business owner that you could share to younger people who, you know, can maneuver what you probably had to go through? Uh, definitely get a mentor as early as possible. 
Um, one thing that you would never hear people really say on air is the majority of people out here really, really fake. Help is never going to come for you. Um, don't ever expect anyone to help you. You, I'm not telling you to um, not network and, and talk to people who are important, who can put you in certain positions. Don't go into to it with that kind of attitude, but just set that expectation and say, look, I have to go out here and build my business and go get customers. Um, that also applies to investors. Investors waste founders time like nobody's business. And if you're a founder of color, you can really forget about it. Less than 2% of us are, found, are funded. So a lot of that, you have to be prepared to put on your bootstraps. They call it bootstrapping. Um, we bootstrapped our way uh, up until our, we, we just now getting our first check last year in our seed round. So, um, you know, it, it, it takes time, but go get customers. Got it. And so just putting yourself out there. And I know with a lot of people in the tech industry, super smart, but not more of an extrovert, right? So what, um, they're more introverts. I mean, let's just keep it, you know, right. 100. That's really what it is. And so for those people who are really like, just want to focus on the technology and only the technology, what advice can you give to them to somebody who may be more reserved? So yeah, it's, it's hard to put yourself out there and, and get on screen and speak. People hate public speaking. It's one of the uh, the top fears, and especially in America, public speaking. Uh, but to that, to that entrepreneur, I would really just tell them, do your best to try to hire your weaknesses. If you can get partners who, uh, like, a, like a head of sales or a head of marketing who can speak on behalf of the company, and then you as the founder, if you're going to get capital, you're going to have to talk to um, these investors directly, they want to hear from the founders. They want to hear from the CEOs. So it's no way around that part, uh, but public facing, you can easily get interns and other people uh, who you can contract them out and then have them basically talk about your company on the internet. And then nowadays, social media is so popular. You can um, hire influencers uh, at a reasonable cost for them to talk about your product or service. That's awesome. And then going into the finances, I know you briefly talked about it and like being a minority and like trying to put yourself out there in business. Um, what have you learned financially, you know, taking that risk of, you know, leaving Apple and starting up your own company? That's very risky. Uh, starting a business in general is super risky and, and it's a sacrifice. What are some financial things that you learned throughout this journey as well? Yeah, if you're going to take that leap, make sure it's a calculated leap. It's uh, you don't want to just jump into the water and and just learn how to swim, you know, without some practice. I, I think there's a, a, a lead off, right? Maybe you save up for six months and say, OK, how what is my bandwidth? How long can I operate this business full time? Can I do eight months? Can I do 10 months? Can I do a year? Uh, and then you can always a job is always going to be here uh, no matter what. But as long as you keep in the back of your mind that you can't pass your job down to anyone in your family. It, it makes the most sense to, to take that risk that, you know, we, we assume that we're going to live to be old people, but you know, people are, are, are dying at very young ages, at, at, you know, so I try to, like Jeff Bezos said, project myself to being like on my deathbed and looking back on my life and say, okay, what kind of risk should I take? And uh, you, you can take that leap. So financially, just be ready to uh, make some sacrifices. You might not have to be able to travel. Right. You may want to take that vacation. You may want to buy certain things. You know, people have certain habits like shopping habits. They want to be on Amazon Prime and shopping all the time and or sneakers, whatever it may be. Um, but you have to sacrifice uh, that money and put it towards your business. And, if, and for those who have kids, it's a lot harder for you to take risks because you have to put food on the table. It's not just you. So you can't you can't take those kind of risks that a person that doesn't have kids. So you have to operate at a different capacity. Um, but all in all, I think the risk is worth it. That's awesome. And then going back to AFIT and the benefits of it, say, for example, you are someone who has a nine to five, but have a side business as well. How can people utilize AFIT? Yeah, most most businesses have trouble keeping up with scheduling, emails, uh, customer support on their website. One of the, the popular use cases that artificial intelligence is used for is customer support bots, they call them chat bots. This is basically an AI assistant that can respond to website visitors. And then uh, the artificial intelligence bot will reply back to that particular customer. So if it's like you, Bianca, you're in an interview with me right now, maybe someone is visiting your website, the chat bot will come up and greet that person as if someone were walking to a store in a mall and say, hey, welcome to 
I don't know, how can I help you? And then they help you sell items on the floor. The chat bot does the exact same thing on a website. So, um, you know, a, a chat bot can help reduce operational costs between 30 to 60%. And then it also help increase sales up to 70%. So a lot of, a lot of great benefits for our artificial intelligence bots. That's awesome. And so I want to also go back to some key points that you had in your Forbes article. Uh, you mentioned that deals aren't always in a boardroom, going back to like the relationship part of things. Uh, kind of uh, elaborate on that, because I always say like, for me personally, living in LA, a lot of it is outside of the office. It's a lot of coffee dates and a lot of those things. Compared to New York, it's more like you're in the office, like building relationships. So kind of explain what you meant by that. Yeah, the environment is different. Deals for sure happen on a golf course, right? And um, that's why I see that the, the deals have the most power because it's not all about business. Investors invest in people as the founder. They invest in the founder. Like the company obviously has to make sense and something they, they will want to invest in, but they have to like you. Yeah. And if they don't understand why you tick, it's not worth the investment to them. There are 300, 500, 1,000 people pitching in pitch decks every day. What's going to make you stand out? It's you. That's awesome. And going back into the friendship part of things, you said ignore the noise when you started this AI. You know, a lot of people weren't talking about AI yeah. at all. I remember I was like, what? What is this? Yeah. And so, you know, in the article, you said ignore the noise. Were, were there a lot of, you know, naysayers and a lot of people confused about what you were doing? AI is hot right now. But, but back then it was like, you know, what in the hell are you talking about? Right. Uh, what do you mean digital bots doing things? And then now you have the emergence of chat GPT and these tools popping up every, every single week. Now it's like, you know, the ocean is huge. And now AFID is one of those fish trying to keep up. See, before it was no, who's doing it. Oh, no one's doing it. And now it's like, Oh, everyone's doing it. What makes you different? It's like, you can't win for losing. Uh, but you, you still have to just stick to um, you know, what brought you there, right? Why the company was created in the first place. And a lot of people have to understand that humanity is at stake because 800 million jobs could be affected by the year 2030. And what, it doesn't matter which industry you're in, you're going to be affected. You're a lawyer, um, you know, media, anything can be affected by artificial intelligence for the better or for worse. Um, so someone at some capacity is going to have to do what's called semi-supervised Bots and AFIT is that automation system to basically say, hey, when robots replace you, you actually get paid from the ones that you control. Wow. I love that. That was a good way of explaining that. That was that was dope. Um, so Brandon, I just want to say thank you so much for being on here. I'm super grateful and so proud of you and everything that you're doing. Uh, where can people follow you? Where can people follow your brand and be a part of AFIT family? Yeah, the website is AFIT.com, A-P-H-I-D.com. Uh, my personal social media is uh, slash Brandon Cooper, zeros for the Cooper. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and the rest of them. That's awesome. And once again, it's your girl, Bianca B. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at it's Bianca B. Also go to Bianca B Show and to make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.